Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be talking about directing Saturday Night Live with directors Don Roy King, who was the director of the series from 2006 until very recently in 2021, and Liz Patrick, who took over from Don recently in 2021. And the first thing I wanted to ask you about was, you know, Saturday Night Live is such a, an incredibly unique environment, and you both came with such extensive experience into this job. Um, you know, Don, you came from world of working in a lot of newsrooms and, and live telecasts and that variety. Um, you know, Liz coming directly from the talk show world with Ellen, but also prior to that working in live television as well. Um, I was really interested in what were kind of the most daunting aspects or the challenges that you almost couldn't have anticipated to be part of the world of Saturday Night Live when you first stepped into these roles individually. Don, uh, sure, sure. Uh, I have, um, I did have a lot of experience doing live television and uh, probably directed every genre of television that Saturday Night Live makes fun of. But I had never worked with uh, sketch comedy and never staged little one act plays with, uh, with actors and uh, certainly never done anything of this scope that comes together in four days and was shocked uh, from the beginning that, that this major operation can be done this quickly. And, uh, and, and still I'm shocked that it, that it gets done this quickly. And, and with the, the size, the scope, the variety, uh, uh, 21 act plays from scratch uh, and, and uh, changes in script material that happens significantly between the first read through, which is Wednesday, the first time we ever see anything on paper, the Saturday night when it is a completed and kind of crisp, very complex production oriented uh, presentation. So uh, I thought I was ready and I wasn't and uh, probably never would be. And for you, Liz? Um, a, a lot of the same, you know, um, I feel like one of the things I was thinking about this morning is, is like, you know, we're presented the scripts on Wednesday. And I start reading them Wednesday morning, start marking up, making my notes, you know, where might I shoot this? Do I need an entrance? Do I need a staircase? Do I need fire? Do we need stunts? What do we need? And you're reading anywhere from, I don't know, 38 to 50 scripts. And then you go to the read through, you see them come to life and then you might have new ideas and try to write those down. And then, and then, you know, we, they pick this, make the selects, we decide what's moving forward. And then immediately we go right into a production design meeting lay out where everything's going to go. And then the writer comes in and is like, did I interpret everything correctly? Because obviously this is your, your child. You're and we want to bring it to life, but you've known it longer than I have. So I often, you know, did I get this right? Did I get that right? Whereas like if we were on a sitcom or an episodic where you'd have a week of pre-production and, and be able to figure out the tone and exactly the whole pacing of it all. So it's just amazing. The, the immediacy that you have to, you have to do everything very quickly, but I enjoy that. Yeah. I mean, the, the speed is at which it all turns around is the most incredible thing when you look at the scope of what that production is week to week. Um, and within that, do you feel like you've, you've kind of developed a certain intrinsic sense of just really trusting the decisions that you're making? Because like, you know, with what you're both saying, you have to make choices incredibly fast. You know, you're looking at a stack of, of sketches that you're going to be putting live on television a couple of days after that fact. And details are continuing to change right up until right before you film as well. Definitely. I think you, you learn to trust your gut because you're usually, it's usually right. And then, and then if, you, and if the script s suddenly goes a different direction, I feel like we all steer it together, whether it's, it's, you know, collaborating with the writers or suddenly production design has an idea, or I have an idea, or the writer has a new idea and trying to, or a cast member. Sometimes they, they come with, with new ideas and they're like, well, hey, what if we did this? And it's just trying to just turn the ship and follow that, follow that road, which is, which is, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the two of you in, in your respective roles directing the series did have a period, you know, you had a handover period working alongside one another, um, you know, and, and so I was interested for, from your perspective, Don, like what you felt were the most important things that you really wanted to pass along in, in terms of the details, how the show comes together, part of the process, you know, the unique world of SNL for Liz to know coming into it. And for you, Liz, what were kind of the key details that you kind of were first starting to try and pull together for yourself to kind of figure out and navigate this new space? 
the transition for me was uh, very different this time around than it was in 2006 when, when a transition was made to me. I directed the very first show that I was uh, uh, hired to, to do. Uh, uh, Beth McCarthy Miller, uh, uh, who the director prior, did sit in the back of the control room for the first three shows. Uh, but, and she was very, very helpful. However, I was calling the shots for, for, right from the beginning. And uh, this time around, we made the transition much more slowly and, and much more intelligently, I think. Partly because the show has grown so much from 2006 to what we do now, both in terms of the, the, the scope and, and the size of, of every given sketch, and also the, the production values, and the electronics, the, the graphic material we add, videotape inserts, the, the special effects. Uh, that's all been growing exponentially, grown exponentially since 2006. So there, was, there, there wasn't any way uh, that, that that transition could have been made the way it was, it was in, in my transition. Uh, however, and, and quite frankly, I wasn't sure that there was anybody out there who had any had nearly the scope of experience that, that, that it would could be the transition could be made in a season. But fortunately, uh, Liz slipped in and she had the, the skill set and the nerves and the willingness to um, stick her neck out and, and and she jumped in and, and made it work and uh, and I sat back by the end saying I'm just going to watch this television show and, and she made it easy. And for you Liz what what was the benefit of of you know having that handover period and and having that kind of mentorship from Don coming into a job like this? Um, the transition was amazing it was nice to uh, come to the show and see Don work uh, and be immersed in this, in the in basically this craziness in this fast-paced world, which was which was fun. And um, and to you know, I had been told previously from people who had either worked on the show or had one time gone to the show, just the the intensity and then just the amount of changes that can take place without it within the show. So it was nice to watch it as a spectator in the control room, see everybody coming to Don, script changes here, here, and then him accommodating it and changing things and reblocking and and having to figure out how to do this. So then as soon as I was submerged submerged into it, it you know, we, we suddenly had this shared <laughs> the shared experience. And I could look at him and be like, wow, okay, I get it. I get it. This happens really fast. And I was used to change and used to quick things, which was, which is great. I feel like my career has kind of set me up for, for this type of show, which has been great. Um, but it was nice to have somebody to turn to and just, you know, be like, Hey, I'm thinking of shooting this over here. Does this work? Or would you do this differently? So it was just nice to have that. And it kind of reminded me of getting my direct start in directing at MTV. Um, you know, and, and actually Beth McCarthy Miller was there when I first started at MTV as a production assistant. And so to see her, you know, run these amazing shows there and then to go on, I was like, oh, wow, if I could just have a smidge of success like she has had, uh, then then I might do OK. But MTV was such a great place because we had um, I think when the time I became a director, there were two other directors there. And so it was nice. It, they were like my older brothers and I could go to them and be like, hey, I'm thinking of doing this. Uh, what do you think? And they're like, give it a try. A lot of it was trial and error. So it was nice to have that experience again with Don, which is something you don't normally get as a director. You're you're solo, you're on your own. And um, so I don't know, it was an incredible experience. Yeah, that's so wonderful. And, you know, Don, jumping back to something that you were saying about, you know, the landscape of the show even has changed in the time that you were working on it. Um, you know, I wanted to ask specifically about the last few years because politically, news-wise, things just started moving so quickly a few years ago. And I know for a lot of the late night show hosts, you know, there would be moments where it's like, we've already recorded the monologue, everything was finalized, and then a big news thing happened. And so they'd have to go back and do a last minute rewrite, you know, kind of key the audience in. And, and it really changed the landscape for a lot of shows. But with the pacing of SNL already being something that moves so quickly and where there all have always been those elements of last minute changes, did did that change the landscape and some of the pacing and how the show was coming together or did it impact it less because it was already there? No, I think it, it significantly affected it. And there were some times when we uh, 
we would rewrite a cold open um, on, on a Saturday afternoon and restage it, and uh, it, and it it would, it would fly on its own uh, in, in the dress rehearsal, uh, and there was a a lot of that. However, I think more importantly, the last few years affected uh, the the value, the significance of Saturday Night Live. I think it became um, a healing element, to not just the ability to make people laugh and to uh, smile at uh, the satire, but there was some sense of, of healing. And we, we did some things that, uh, that, that weren't designed for, uh, for laughs, but were designed just to say, hey, things are okay. And, uh, and I'm more proud of those, I think, than, than uh, anything else we did. And in, in the general process and putting together each weekly show, you know, Liz was mentioning there's that journey of you have the initial stack of like 40 or so sketches, then it gets narrowed down. And, and even at that point, you know, you're already kind of starting to go through and conceptualize how you might direct each sketch, yeah. even before you're in the final ones for the show. Um, how do you kind of look at the, the individual language, like the tone, the type of approach, you know, what type of sketch is it? What's the comedic sensibility of the sketch and, and kind of use that to start really figuring out a lot of the directorial elements, particularly when it comes to how am I going to use the camera to tell a story within this sketch? As Liz suggested, it is uh, a principally a writer's show. And uh, uh, each, each writer, and each sketch is usually just coming from one writer or from one pair of writers. And that, that, that pair has uh, had that, that uh, vision from the first written word. That first written word may have been uh, a week ago or maybe in years ago, and they have a real sense of how best to tell that story. And so uh, it's uh, the director's role, I think, to um, accommodate that vision and to bring it to life in a way that it does justice to uh, what they had imagined from, from the very first written word. And so it's a much more collaborative uh, relationship uh, than, than other shows, uh, much more collaborative than, than theater, much more collaborative than, than Saturday Night Live used to be um, because that, that uh, trust in the written word uh, comes first. And that's, that's uh, Lauren Michaels is, uh, was, uh, still is a brilliant writer himself, uh, places uh, biblical importance on the, on the written word and rightly so, I think. And what's that part of the process like for you, Liz? It's, you know, a lot of the same. I feel like, I don't know, going back to the writers, um, knowing the material the best and then relying on them to help, uh, you know, to help answer questions or make sure I understood things. Um, that was yeah. simple. <laughs> You know, and off the back of what you were saying about that, that real collaboration that comes out of that, Don, um, did you find, especially, you know, with how long you were directing the show and and the the way that you would work so closely with cast members that were on the show for a long time and, and writers that were there for a long time, that that kind of started to give you a certain sensibility of, okay, this is a sketch that Amy and Seth have written. And so this is probably some of how they're going to approach it or some of how they're going to want to come into it. Did you kind of start to have a bit of a shorthand in terms of, how you saw their vision coming to life. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've even gotten the shorthand in how to answer your question. So the answer is yes. <laughs> I also and wanted I to, feel, talk about, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I feel like in my short, short time there too, I feel like now I know what certain writers expect and want and what they mean by, by what they're saying. So it, it, it just takes a moment to, you know, to figure each other out and, and figure out what works for, for us and who, whose style is, everyone has a different style and a different way of doing things. Yeah. So we're you basically know, within, conductors putting it all together. <laughs> And within within that as well, and that that idea of kind of like conducting between all the different departments, it also seems like a place where people come and they stay there for a really, really long time. It's not a high turnover place. You know, people come and work on this show for, for years, if not decades. Um, and so how does that also influence all of the behind the camera elements, you know, working with the art department, working with costumes, working with hair and makeup and all those details coming together in the way that, again, that also just creates a shorthand and a different language in how you can pull all these aspects together so quickly. I think that's very perceptive and absolutely uh, uh, accurate. Uh, 
I've never worked on a show that had uh, less turnover. And it's because there are no other shows like it. And people who are the best at what they do and the fastest at what they do end up there and, and stay there because it, it's, number one, it's uh, a, a thrilling place to be. It is challenging and rewarding and important. And, and you work with the people who are the best at what they do. And it, it, there's no other place you want to go to. Uh, and, but as a result, shorthand uh, uh, yeah, develops and it works with all the departments. And they're so they're, they're self-starters. The, the prop people will go, will go out and, and find what you need. And it suddenly shows up on, on Saturday. And I'll walk into the, I'll walk into the set and say, man, who, who found this wallpaper? And, 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 and why oh, all these desks are here? This looks just like a, a classroom in Chicago. And, and, and it wasn't based on any conversation they had with me or based on my vision of, of how this would be. It just, it, it happens. And it, it's just because they're, they're brilliant people. Yeah. And I also wanted to talk about the visual language of the show because it is a myriad between certain elements of the show that we kind of stylistically know, okay, this is how the camera usually comes in on the cold open. This is how we transition over to the band. This is how we regroup with everybody at the end. And then at the same time, there's there's a lot of playfulness, you know, going back to what you were saying about figuring out the style of each of the sketches along with the writers. And so for both of you, what have you found are the very specific cornerstones of the visual language of the show over the years where it's, you know, we can change around and play with the these sides of it, but this is something that, you know, kind of needs to feel the same for the audience week to week. I was gonna say, Don, do you wanna start that? What I feel like there, well, no, no, I guess I'm starting, but I feel like there have been times that I would be like, hey, Don, have you ever added something like this or added something like that? Or, you know, a different shot. And it's like, well, over the years, we haven't done that. But in, in terms of pitching new things, some things need to stay the same, possibly. I don't know if that's a great answer. Don, you started off. <laughs> no, I, think, I, I think that's accurate. I think, but I think it, 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 it's a good question because in many ways it is an old fashioned show and much of it had to do with uh, simplification. And it's simplification that I, I started wanting to add shots and to show off a little bit and to, uh, to uh, add little things where people would say, oh, that's a great shot. And then I realized, or I was convinced that uh, that if somebody at home is saying, "Oh, that's a great shot," that means that they've been taken out of uh, of the, the 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 mystery, they've taken out of the the script, been taken away from from that the character. They're thinking now about uh, a technical aspect. And so, uh, Lauren was very insistent, and still is, I guess, that that it be as simple as it can be visually to just sell the joke to let the performances happen and to provide the, the right frame where you don't distract in any any way and uh, and so I stopped showing off and I think that it benefited the the, the, the real core the real heart of the show so, and I, think I mean to, yeah. sorry I think to Don's point there I, uh you know, I think I came in sometimes and was like, oh, I could add this shot and that. But then I'm like, well, does it serve the story? And does it take you out of the moment? Does it take you out of the comedy? And so, so yes, you have to hold back sometimes on, on something that you think you, you want to do. But then it's just finding, you know, some of the sketches that come through then throw you a nice challenge where you get to do something creative and something different and think outside of the box. So we get a little bit of everything. Yeah, no, I think that's a really great point, you know, and and Don as well, when there, when there were those moments where you would kind of play with the format a little bit, you know, I've, I've heard you mention that, you know, kind of you'd been watching some of the older episodes of SNL when they used to kind of come out at the end of a sketch and you'd see the mechanics of, okay, we're in a studio, we see the cameras, you know, we see Cue Card Wally or elements like that, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and that was something that you kind of thought would be great to bring in very selectively. What would be the tipping point for a choice like that and in, in kind of going, okay, well, this is a moment where it does feel right and it does feel appropriate to do something a little bit different or bring the audience in a different way to the sketch? Yeah, I I really looked back and, and, and saw that done occasionally and, and realized that, that I remembered watching and thinking, oh, that's cool to see well, the big picture, to, to see Wally, to, to see see the, where the cameras were and oh, they how, see the, where the booms have been set. And, and it's it, it, it just a nice, nice moment that 
people in the studio get to see and feel and experience. And why not give the people at home that, that same, as long as it's not uh, uh, affecting the, the, the material itself, not affecting the, the, the thread, the, the arc of, of the story, step out of it, it's over. Now we get to see them rush off to get ready for the next sketch. I, did, I, I, I was, uh, and most importantly, uh, Lauren didn't complain about that. So I, it, it, you got away with it. <laughs> I got away with it. And, and it was really helpful too in sketches where, you know, you did a gag where people might be thinking at home, how did they do that? So it was nice to, to see the reveal. It always, I think it helps, helps the story. Yeah. At the end. And how, mu how much do you find that there are elements within a sketch logistically that inform the way that you're filming and the way that you're directing a sketch, you know, because it's even just sometimes it's something as simple as, OK, we're in the middle of weekend update and this is typically how we have the camera, but someone needs to do a costume change and there's not enough time for them to step out of frame in order to do it. So we need to frame over here. Um, and so how, you know, do most sketches have logistical elements that come into play in terms of the choices you're making or does it really depend on the sketch? It depends on the sketch, but then I feel like sometimes, yeah, there are times you need to cover an element and I'll often write in my script, um, you know, cover here because sometimes during, during dress rehearsal, I might see something and be like, oh, I really should be over here, but it's just another reminder to me. Oh no, this is where we're making that quick change or this is where so-and-so is putting on a prop or, or something like that. And then to a weekend update point, we had a fish tank that had an octopus in it and we were changing signs in it. And I, and I was like, oh, we could just do it on the two shot and cut off. And it was like, no, no, let's add this single here so we can make it a little bit easier for the prop department and everyone. Um, so it, it's just finding choices like, like that and different sketches to help, to help cover. <laughs> and there are, you know, in, in the behind the scenes as well, there are kind of like overall operational elements that go into the creation of the show that are also so very specifically SNL. You know, if we look at the use of, of cue cards, you know, that's also in part because that helps with the eyeline for the performers and the actors because they're not looking at a teleprompter, which is going to break the fourth wall with the camera, you know, or the use of a crane camera, because again, that's the visual language that people know and expect from the show. And so what are some of those key components that you feel like are just so very intrinsic to the behind the scenes or operational elements or kind of like camera movement that that are so specifically SNL that, that wouldn't have come in your previous jobs? You know way too much about this. I, have you been hanging out in the control room? I, um, the, the answer is that, that, uh, that it, it is the smoothest running operation and, and it has to be because of the, its speed and the, the production demands. Uh, but just the best people at what they do care so much and work so hard to take care of so many of those little, little uh, uh, production hurdles. And uh, I, whether it's the placement of cue cards or the, or, or the, how the boom can get in between cameras at the right time and the right place and how they know to follow the dialogue in ways that uh, I'll, I'll sketch it's changing significantly, make sure that everyone is mic'd, it, it, it just, it, it just a, uh, a remarkable all-star team, and, and uh, it was a it was a thrill to work with them. And you know, because there are those changes that happen even after you've had the day of dress rehearsal. Sometimes they're still, you know, really big changes. Sometimes they're quite minute. By the time it comes to the live show, is there ever anything as much as like a locked version of how you're going to direct the show that night? Or is it something where you kind of go into every live taping knowing, okay, this is the foundation. This is the outline of the plan of how we're going to direct tonight's show. But there may also still be things on the fly that might happen that might cause me to change direction or, or make a different choice in the moment. There were a few times that um, the sketch changed for me um, between dress and air. And air. And it was not enough time to maybe transfer all the notes or to be able to not necessarily transfer notes, but to think about how you could cover this diff differently. So, and sometimes it was like, okay, he's going to enter over here now instead or make a move this way. Well, do you know what line is going on? Don't know yet. Okay. Well, that's where my, my live skills come in play and I'll, and I'll follow along, but I'll know I'll have to get back to what the plan was eventually. So it's, it, it generally is scripted, but I feel like in those, some, 
those moments between dress and air, there are some times where it's like, it's changed. I was literally handed a change <laughs> mid sketch <laughs> this year. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like, hand it to my AD, Michael, tell me what it is. And, you know, get, get me back where it is. But it was like, you know, we, we, we want to try to keep as many sketches in the show as possible. And I think it was like, okay, we can get out early here. So you're going to bail after this tape. Uh, as soon as they jump out the window, roll the tape and then you're out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And because of that, you know, there's obviously, I imagine both nerves and kind of an excitement and an adrenaline that comes with all of that, that, that probably never fully goes away. Um, but do you find for both of you that in the time that you've worked on the show, that that relationship with kind of like the adrenaline and the nerves changes because at a certain point you're like, oh, we're changing this. Of course we are, you know, cause you've been through the fire so many times. These interviews make me more nervous than directing the show. <laughs> Um, but I think, I think we get, we, we get a high from that energy and it, and it keeps you running. And I've, I've said before that on Saturday, I feel like, uh, I'm an endurance athlete because I'm doing this three times and we may get it right the first time we may almost get it right the second time, but the third time, it, I mean, they're all important, but that third time I feel like it, we definitely need to nail it, but it's, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of pressure, but, um, I feel like I've always succeeded with that within pressure somehow. And I'm, uh, maybe I'm built for it. <laughs> Don, how did you do? I feel the same way that, uh, I, I, from the first time I tried directing live model camera television in college at the end of it, I thought, Whoa, that was a, great adrenaline rush and it feels familiar. I, I know that's just like quarterbacking a football team. Like I'm counting on, on all of the, all of the linemen to, to, to lay the, their positions as they have been asked. I'm barking orders as it happens. I'm keeping my eye on the clock. I'm reacting to, to things that could happen at any moment. And, uh, and if something goes wrong, you, you cannot dwell on it. You can't try to find out why. You got to move on to the next thing. Otherwise, the it snowballs. And so I thought, uh, I feel like I'm the quarterback here. And I love that challenge. And I love that rush. And it stayed the same for me for 53 years. And uh, and I, uh, I, 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 yeah, it's an endurance sport in many ways. That's amazing. And, you know, obviously a lot of that comes on the night of in the control room, what's, what's kind of the environment that both of you have tried to create in the control room and the most important aspects of communication that need to be constantly flowing in order for the show to execute in the way you need it to? I feel like the, the script changes are the most important to me in between dress and air and, and um, facilitating those quickly and then, and then making your camera notes and your blocking notes um, because that's where it, it can get tricky. And so depending on on how quickly the writer does that and how quickly they get it to the script department and how quickly they they, they can transfer the note, those notes directly to my script. It's literally the first some time somebody took one of my sketches out of my book. I was like, no, wait, you can't. I was so protective. I'm like, what if you lose it? But that's the way it's done. They take it, they write the notes directly on it and then they, they put a post-it on it and I've got to look at it and figure out how it affects me and how it affects our whole team and whether it affects audio or whether, whether it affects an entrance or a prop. And so, and then trying to then turn around and give that information to the correct, to the correct parties is, is the hardest part I feel. Yeah. And for you, Don? I think my strongest asset over 53 years was uh, concentration and the ability to focus on just what the needs are at any given time. And, uh, and uh, I've, a couple of years ago, uh, at, at the end of a show, someone came in and said, uh, well, that was exciting that, that Stephen was in here. I said, Stephen? I said, yeah, Steven Spielberg was standing right over your shoulder watching the entire show. I had no idea. I, it was, it never occurred to me to even turn around to see if there was somebody, that, let alone who it would be. And, and uh, I, I think that that's served me in many ways. And it's it's sort of reflective of the, the quarterback uh, uh, analogy, too. That's amazing. I, well, I had one of those moments. It was Clint Eastwood at Ellen. And suddenly the producer jumps in my headset and was like, don't get nervous or anything. But Clint Eastwood's watching you direct the show. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I love that level of, of focus and dedication to what you're doing. And I honestly just think that directing SNL is, is such an impressive role that, you know, both of you have played in, in the show because of how this show comes together at week by week. And I'm always impressed by what you managed to pull off. So thank you so much for sharing all of these behind the scenes details. It's been such a pleasure, Liz and Don. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>